Mark here from Talk Beliefs, and Neil, as always, from Reason Now, has joined me. Hello, Neil. How have you doing? How are you? Yes, very well. Thank you very much. Good, good, good. Yeah, a lot going on at the moment. Yes, you've been very busy. I know I've got a lot of interviews coming up and one's actually on the cards, uh, so many so that I had to make a list, <laughs> which is as, as long as my arm. But I've got some very interesting ones uh, in the can already. And not just that, we have the Jehovah's Witness protest or ex-Jehovah's Witness protest coming up at the Excel Convention Center in London this weekend. And I'm going to be a part of that. And there's people flying in from all over the world to attend that, aren't there? Yes, yes, including my friend and fellow podcaster, Meg Slaymaker. She has a, an excellent channel about her experiences when she was in the Jehovah's Witnesses. Obviously, she's left now. And she does some great work speaking out and helping people to critically think their way through their deconversion. And so I would recommend that anyone go over to her channel. I'll put a link in the description below. And so Meg and I and several others, we will be at the protest and hopefully some other people that we have uh, spoken to on the channel. Lydia Finch, for instance, and perhaps Lloyd Evans will be there. I uh, wouldn't be surprised at all. And that will be at the uh, Excel Docklands. JW Protest are the name of the organizers. And you'll find that they've got their own Facebook page if you want to have a look at that. But also I discovered there's a um, one or two Christian groups going down, including Witness for Jesus, uh, which is an organization, YouTube channel. I will say good on them because they're protesting for exactly the same reasons that we are, which is, you know, the shunning, the uh, blood transfusion ban, uh, the pedophilia, all that. But they're kind of, you know, saying, well, your cult is wrong, but ours is right. I always love it when uh, two different Christian groups are protesting each other because it's very much of a you're not doing Jesus right yeah do it our way <laughs> it's not a pink unicorn it's a red one yeah, yeah. and seeing as there's 3,000 different types of Jesus cults then which one is right which one are we supposed to choose it always does my head in and yeah. I can never get a straight yeah. answer out of any of them which one I'm supposed it's to choose it's the one that you belong to that's, that's always I way. love doing it on the high street we often get Many different types of preachers out on one day on the high street, and I love stopping because I know a few of them now. Just having a having a joke and a laugh with them, just saying, "John, John, come on, which one have I got to choose? <laughs> which one have I got to choose?" There's about four of you in a row here within about fifty meters of each other. Yeah, it, tell me which one's going to get me into heaven. Dueling Bible bashers. I mean, yeah. we have seen that. Like, yeah, the JWs here, and you had the the um, the weird. Jesus cult guy in the street opposite them. You know, it's like, oh, look at that. Which one do we choose? It's good old Occam's razor, isn't it? Yes. Which one right. do you choose? Uh, well, the, the that is like the simplest is always the best. But I think in that case, none of them are the best. <laughs> yeah. Homer Simpson said it right. What if I choose the wrong one and make God angry? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, another cult which uh, I, I am going to be looking into uh, for the first time on the channel is uh, the Unification Church, otherwise known as the Moonies. I've interviewed Teddy Hose. Now, he is an ex-Mooney, grew up in the Unification Church, and he was on the recent A&E show, Cults and Extreme Belief. There was a, an entire show about the Unification Church and specifically about the splinter sect by Reverend Moon's son. That was very, very weird. So uh, yeah, I've interviewed him. And what's really interesting about that is that the Sanctuary Church, which is kind of not taken over, but it's, it's like a, a splinter group. They're in love with guns. <laughs> yes, these, these are the guys who got their guns blessed, I believe. Yes, yes, everybody saw that. And I remember when I saw that in the news, I thought, is this some sort of weird Pentecostal but they weren't just guns, they were massive automatic AR rifles. AR-15s. They weren't loaded and yeah. they were, you know, nothing like that. But they were encouraged by Sean Moon to bring them into the church and have a blessing ceremony. Usually the, the Moonies have a blessing ceremony for these multiple marriages, which, which they do. But this time it was to bless the guns because, of course, everyone's coming for them. Yeah. I mean, this is a strange turn of events. I, all I really remember about the Moonies from when I was younger is there was always lots of news stories on the BBC or something about these mass weddings. It's the biggest wedding that's ever taken place. Yeah. And they're almost as like it was a celebration yeah. thing of this weird cult. But So I'm looking forward to seeing what he has to say it goes on because I really don't know very much about the Moonies. I, I knew a little bit, but I certainly know a lot more now. Like those arranged marriages were, well, really there to, just to make sure that you get as many people in the church married off having kids and they would often 
pair uh, different different ethnicities together. This was Moon's way of curing racism. Of course, that doesn't really work. Yeah, he died in 2012, and he has lots and lots of children, and several of them are doing things, but it's it's Sean who started the Sanctuary Church, and he's just a gun lover. He even owns, I think, an online gun shop or something like that. Oh, they have something to sell, um, don't they? Yeah, and he wears a crown of gold bullets. <laughs> this man sounds a bit scary. Yeah, I, and... Uh, Is this going to be the next Waco? It could be, but like with Waco, they're kind of setting it up themselves, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, scary. Uh, it's, it's scary. Um, something else that is also very scary that we came across recently in an article in the Independent Co. UK is homeopathy. Yeah, so in UK, we finally got to the point that the British humanists have been fighting this for years of trying to get homeopathy out of the health service because it's a... It, it's just a nonsense, it's a scientific nonsense, and um, it's wasting lots of money that could be spent on other healthcare. And not only that, the outcomes from people who have homeopathy are much worse. You're much more likely to die, for example, as if you try to use homeopathy remedies mm. for cancer. And then it actually ends up costing the NHS more in the long run because they're having to treat people with symptoms are much worse. Well, what the scary thing was, they took the government to court to try to block this banning. So it's like, mm. oh, are they gonna win this court case because it's a person's right to choose their type of therapy effectively? That's what they were yeah, arguing. That was scary. Yeah, and um, so it's like, oh, we're gonna now have to get homeopathy back in the NHS. But they lost. And not only did they lose, they lost big time. <laughs> and they have been lumbered <laughs> with 120,000 pounds worth of uh, legal bills after their failed challenge. Well, personally, I hope this sends some of them bankrupt and uh, some of these charlatans <laughs> end up having to find real jobs. And it'll be a thing of the past. Yep, the uh, the article says homeopaths to pay a £120,000 bill for a failed legal challenge against the NHS. British Homeopathic Association argues that the health service is prejudiced against remedies it banned for lack of evidence. <laughs> Now, the chief executive of NHS England, Simon Stevens, has said that the remedies were at best a placebo, and that's being generous, and that scarce NHS funds could be sent elsewhere. This led to a legal challenge on the basis the negative statements about homeopathy had prejudiced the public consultation and the evidence had been too difficult for the public to understand. While an appeal was granted, it was rejected after four days of legal arguments. I like that. It was uh, the negative statements about homeopathy have prejudiced the public consultation. Just saying the fact that it doesn't work and doesn't do anything. Now, for anyone who doesn't know, <laughs> this is... No, I did try this once. It is this notion of like cures like. You know, a bee yeah. sting cures a bee sting and all this nonsense. Uh, but it has to be diluted way down. Diluted down to a degree where there are no active ingredients left. But yeah. the water you're diluting it down with somehow has a memory of the thing that was in it. It's nonsense of the highest order. Now, the placebo effect you will get from it sure. is just by you go to any therapist and, and see someone and just the fact you're sitting across a table or you're lying on a bed talking to someone. But that's not guaranteed. Enough in, it's not guaranteed. It's not guaranteed, but it's enough in some circumstances to actually kick your immune system in. But what? It has, your brain does amazing things. Oh yeah. Yeah, but it's it's not it's not a real therapy. And when I well, I tried this years ago, when I was going through my you know I will try everything stage, you know Chinese medicine and, and crystals and all that, I did that. And I went to one here in our town, and yeah, I took the little pills, were just little sugar pills. I did all that, and I'd go back, and he basically put me in a room, lay me down, and chanted over me. <laughs> That yeah. is part of it too, apparently. I mean, part of my big problem with homeopathy is they do take you into other types of woo-woo, other types of nonsense. So actually, they end up being anti-vaxxers, some of them, yeah. um, and just dangerous people, effectively. So that's one of my biggest problems. If you want to go to your doctor and lie on the bed and have a pay for an hour's consultation, like a couple of hundred quid for an hour's consultation, then be given a sugar pill and feel a bit better about yourself, Good on you, go for it. And pay for the privilege. But not on the NHS and not selling people false hopes because this is the other problem. People literally die because they sold false hopes where they should have gone to the doctors earlier. They should have 
been on medication and chemo earlier. Mm. Um, the facts are cancer patients who use homeopathy are twice as likely to die mm. as people who don't. Now, so we cannot allow this. I'm so happy, so happy it's been banned in the UK. In the world at the moment, to see rationality winning out, that is so hopeful at the moment. We have to take the wins we can get. <laughs> yeah, and also uh, something else that, that it's pointed out here is that GPs, that's like your family doctor, who prescribes homeopathy are more likely to be rated poorly, and that can't be a good thing. Of course they are, because more of their patients are going to be dying. Yeah. <laughs> That's, of that's course, there will be those who popular. swear by it, of course, you know, but I mean, when I did this whole sort of like, you know, I'm going to try alternatives, which I did for a year. I remember, I forget what the problem what it was I had. I think it was a, a skin complaint of some kind. And I went to all these places. I went to homeopathy. That didn't work. I went to the Chinese medicine. That didn't work. I went to a crystal healing thing. That didn't work. <laughs> and then I went to my little doctor up the road and she said, here, put this on your skin. It went the next day. <laughs> That's quite a typical example of what happens, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah and yet people wasted a ton them. of money on this Because it's sham tried industry. and tested in the lab. Yeah, on this sham yeah. industry. But a lot of these people who believe in these alternative remedies um, will say, oh, big pharma, big industry, forgetting the fact that homeopathy, remedy, Chinese rem massive industries, huge industries making a ton of money. It's always down to money and stuff. A ton of money. These people, these people, most of them know it doesn't work. You get a few believe <laughs> that they've got these special powers, but most people know it doesn't work and they're just selling a, selling a nonsense. I wonder if the proponents of, uh, of this nonsense are actually sort of at heart conspiracy-minded people. Very much so. Uh, my experience from a uh, reason now and working in the shop is people who come in and believe in homeopathy will very much believe in conspiracy theories. They, they, mm. They're not people who have learned to think critically. And I can absolutely say I was one of those people when I was much younger. And it's something I learned later yeah. on in life. Like the bigger and richer and more clever they are, the more likely that you're going to suffer because you're the little person. Well, it's an authority figure telling you something and you, you're just accepting that authority figure's point of view, whether it be homeopathy, anti-vaxxers, whatever. You see this person's authority figure and if you're not figure and if you're not a critical thinker, you will just accept that at face value. Yeah, so the authority figures that they are, are being wary of, you know, what about the authority figure that are telling about the alternative? Exactly. You know, why, exactly. why aren't they suspicious of them? You yeah, know? very strange. Oh, uh, gosh. And this brings us on to something else that we wish we could remedy, and that is the evangelical mindset. This comes from Pink News, Co. UK. Brace yourself, everyone. <laughs> A pastor with ties to Republican Senator Ted Cruz has claimed that God created the deadly wildfires in California to punish the state for accepting gay people. Always the gays. Of course. Blame the gays. Yeah. Yes. Bloody hell. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin Swanson has a history of making anti-LGBT statements. Last year, he claimed that Hurricane Harvey was a punishment from God for Texas rejecting an anti-trans law and that public schools will turn kids into transgender communists. <laughs> transgender communists. Okay, I, I said I wasn't going to laugh, but um, actually, no, I'm glad I laughed. And in 2016, he said that Girl Scout leaders should be drowned for being too pro-gay. Did he really say it? Well, well this is this article saying this. I mean, you couldn't say that in the UK. I mean, freedom of speech has its limits in the UK. That, that's inciting There's freedom of speech, violence. and then there's... Wow. Hate speech. Most experts yeah. have agreed that the ferocity of the wildfires, which have so far killed 11 people, it's a lot more now, injured 10 and caused more than $400 million worth of damage is down to climate change. But unfortunately, it's not that way, at least according to Pastor Swanson. The fact of the matter is God is burning down California. There's no question about this. The last year or two, we've seen the worst fires in terms of damage to property in California history. Is it time to leave the state of California? That's a question we want to uh, deal with in just a moment. But do understand that uh, there are reasons for God bringing his judgment to a state or to a nation. And so the first question that needs to be asked is how might California repent of some particular sins? California evidently is particularly proud of one sin, and that it's the sin of homosexuality. Earlier this month, California Governor Jerry Brown 
signed a bill into law that permanently established the month of June as LGBT Pride Month, that is, Pride in the Sin of Homosexuality. And the author of the bill, Assembly Member Evan Lowe, said California has the largest LGBT population of any state in the union, and the state is home to over 40 LGBT pride celebrations each year. Now, assuming that God is in the heavens, assuming that uh, he is still in control and he is concerned with the sexual uh, habits of those who, who happen to live in the state of California or anywhere else, assuming that God is still just, assuming that God prefers humility to pride, and would love to see uh, a humble publican versus a proud homosexual. Uh, Assuming that God is still a God who responds to humility, but tends his judgment upon proud nations that uh, persist in the sin of homosexuality. Assuming that be the case, then why is God burning down the state of California today? Uh, Because if he doesn't, Kevin, then he's going to have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. Right. So there you go, Neil. Like, oh, where do we break this down from? Yeah. So um, um, I don't know. Let's, let's... It's a gay-friendly state. So instead of burning down, I don't know, the the gay section of town, uh, he 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 goes up north to some valleys where some peaceful people are living and probably who are Republicans, and burns down their valley. Very much Republican areas and. If you look at if you look at the state of California, it's the big cities that the Democrat areas and the liberal areas and the outlying areas tend to be uh, Republicans. So he's he's attacking his own base. God, yay! Well done, God. (laughs) Very strange. Um, But then you've got to start with he's he's going on about sin straight away, and you're just like, hang on, you got to prove sin is a real thing. That's just something in in the book in your head. But sins are a real thing. And there's plenty of sins cited in the Bible, but they always seem to come back to the one which they personally don't like. Yeah, and how comes they ignore all the other sins in the Bible? Yeah. Sins don't exist. We have moral contracts in countries between people mm. called laws. Isn't divorce say. a sin? Divorce Why don't sin. they ever mention that? Yeah, exactly. Or murder. They don't seem to care about murder. No, what if your wife, you find out your wife Unless wasn't a virgin they, oh, when you married her? Yeah. Hey, yes, yes. Sins don't exist. We have moral norms that we accept and they've changed over time. This word sin is a bollocks word as far as I'm concerned. The Bible gets so some that, things correct, you know, murdering yeah, yeah. obviously is wrong. But then But that allows them to go with their prejudices. Yeah. Then we have to go into he keeps saying assuming God exists. Why why should we assume God exists? Yeah, Just he kept saying that. Did you say it? Why would he even say that? Yeah. Why should we ex- assume God exists? You, you've you've made a claim. Prove he exists before you go on your bigoted rant. Prove he exists. This is your feelings you're coming out here. So, why should we assume he exists? And if and he's up in heaven watching us. That's what he said. Mm. So, okay, let's take him at his this this for the sake of argument. Say God does exist. Let's assume God exists. Mm. And uh, he's sitting up there watching what's going on. What sort of psychopath would create gay people and then punish them by burning down their neighbours' houses? Because none of these gay people are being affected by it. Yeah, They're all living happily in the cities, having their gay pride month and their Mardi Gras and enjoying themselves. And yeah. It's a weird logic. Oh, well, I think... Didn't he say that he's punishing those who allowed it? So perhaps he is punishing his own people. But it would be a psychopath that would do that. It would be well, a psychopath God that would is create a psychopath. something we know to... <laughs> well, then you <laughs> would create something to punish it. Yeah. So he got that. Then, oh, where, where, would, he, where would he go now? Um, so he's making a lot of assumptions that seem to be, in fact, his opinions. Mm. He keeps, assume God does this. Assume God does that. These seem to be his opinions. They seem to be his prejudices. No, and surely, his surely not. Bigotry that never happens with about these pastors. Gays. So is it... I don't know. What's going on here? Is, is he a bit self-loathing? I mean, why has he got such a... Are you implying that he has gay tendencies that he's I don't repressing? know, but there seems to be a history that, of these sort of pastors. Are you thinking of Ted Haggard and the... <laughs> prostitute the male prostitute indeed i probably that was just yeah. a fluke neil <laughs> indeed so it's just it's just his bigotry it's just a it's just a way he can easily express his bigotry yeah and the the real reason we get in these fires we have forest fires all the time when there's droughts mm-hmm. stuff gets dry 
something happens. Sometimes it's a person deliberately setting it. Sometimes it's just a little bit of glass got dropped and causes a fire. It could be any number of reasons. But the problem is because of climate change, they're all getting exacerbated. All these things, they're, they're getting worse and worse and worse. It's the Tornadoes are there. getting worse. Cyclones are getting worse. Storms are getting worse. Mm. Forest fires are getting worse. So it's not just California. It's, it's not just Greece, California. It's Greece, Sweden, Sweden, even here in England we've yeah, had it. Yeah, even in England. I've never heard of that in England. Ireland had some recently as well. I'm sure Ireland God, these gay many. people get everywhere. Yeah, indeed. Well, Ireland just passed gay married. <gasps> oh, no. Ah, uh, that must be it. No, no, it's God, it. it's God punishing America because he's focused on America. Indeed. And the real reason it's worse now than it has ever been is because bloody Republicans and corporations have been blocking climate change action for decades now absolute decades that's why it's getting worse and who votes for republicans bloody evangelical christians vote for republicans and get them in yeah they seem to back up anything these yeah we can pollute the earth do. because the earth is for our use and god's coming back soon anyway so it doesn't matter why should we expend energy with all this this uh, and a lot of right thinking christians change. don't act like that because Not they, all of them, no. they don't. But these evangelicals, it's one of the worst lines in the Bible, in my mind, that you, oh, everything is there for you to treat however you want, basically. Trash it as much as you want, because they take it seriously. So they let they let the Republicans and the corporations get away with this shit. Yeah. So in my mind, this guy is, is just an asshole, expresses his own bigotry in what in the UK would be classed as hate speech, some of mm. it. I mean, I know America does have freedom yeah. of speech, he doesn't like gay people, and he would burn them all up. I think that's basically what's being said here. Yeah, think what is going on in this man's head. Yeah. What is going on in this man's head? He would happily kill people. Mm. This is what's going on in his head. Yeah, it's, it's sad, but unfortunately, we're going to have more of this to come because this isn't going to stop now. This no. It won't happen every year, these type of fires, but it has happened a few years on the trot, but they're going to get worse over the decades. And I'm guessing there's going to be more fundamentalists coming up, cultists coming up, blaming all sorts of people. But there'll also be rational thinking people who will ingeniously come up with something, whether it's uh, cloud seeding or retardants that which they can apply. I don't know. I don't know. Something, something clever. Hopefully, hopefully. But in some, should we end the news uh, on a little good note? Yes. Alex Jones's Infowars is dead. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes, that's right. But Apple, YouTube, Facebook, they've all banned him. And Spotify. And yep. Spotify. And it's funny because you've got the usual justice warriors going on. Oh, it's free speech. You can say whatever you want. He They're can. banning me because they know I'm right. That's he what he'll come out He can say whatever he wants. In his, wherever he wants to, he can shout it from his rooftop, from his own website and that. But these are private corporations who have no... But when he insults murdered children by saying Sandy Hook was a hoax with actors, that's you've got to draw the line. That was disgusting. But So he broke their rules. Whether he believes it or not. Off. Yeah, and he doesn't believe it. He said something he's, cool. <laughs> he's, you said he was selling... Yeah, he basically sells supplements and that. It's all a big con to sell supplements. Mm. But it's great that hate speech, It'll be homeopathy, hate speech, and misinformation. For me, one of the biggest things is he sold misinformation all the time. And the Sandy Hook is a great example. Those poor parents, what they had to go through. Him saying their children didn't die; they were actors, and they got hassled for years, mm. and are probably still getting hassled today by extreme right wing nuts. So it's a it's a win, it's a win. And unfortunately for the people who say. Could it be freedom of speech, we have to have freedom of speech and we have to discuss things. I tell you what, occasionally you have to be a liberal to stop fascism. Could it be the pendulum is swinging back? I think progress? it is. I think it is. And I think the next swing back you will see is Brexit getting stopped. Britain is the first country that went down the populist nationalist route after the collapse of the banks. Um, unbelievable, the oldest democracy in the world just crashed in on itself to nationalism. And if we stop Brexit, it'll be the first country to come out of this nationalistic thing and accept that we are better off working together to make a better planet. So it'll be Brexit and then it'll be Trump and then we can get on with fixing the problems like climate change. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great note to end on. And I will see you next week.